It's been a while since we last saw the giant starship take off, and for some time it felt like things had gone a bit quiet. But that calm period is about to end. SpaceX is moving much faster than many people expected this year, and just recently they did something with Starship that clearly shows the next launch is closer than we thought. In this video, we're going to break down exactly what happened and what it tells us about how soon Starship could be flying again. Before we get into the details, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future updates on Starship and everything SpaceX is working on. It's been only one week into 2026, and we're already seeing that SpaceX is not playing around this year. Before most people even got back into their routines, the company quietly rolled out one of the biggest milestones in the Starship program so far. They stacked the Super Heavy booster for Starship Flight 12. And this isn't just another routine step. This stack marks the start of a completely new phase for Starship. The booster that was stacked is Booster 19, and it's part of what SpaceX internally treats as the Version 3 generation of Starship hardware. This matters, because Version 3 is the first version that's not just about learning how to fly and survive, but about actually pushing toward orbital operations. Up until now, every Starship flight has still been, in one way or another, a stepping stone. Flight 12 is where those stepping stones start to connect. To understand why this stacking event matters, you have to go back to what happened with Booster 18 late in 2025. Booster 18 was supposed to be the first Super Heavy using the new Version 3 design, but it never made it past ground testing. During a pressurization test, the booster suffered a structural failure and partially collapsed. The vehicle was being filled and pressurized to simulate flight conditions when the tanks buckled under pressure, causing visible deformation of the structure. In simple terms, the booster couldn't handle the internal forces it was designed to withstand. This wasn't an engine issue, and it wasn't a software problem. The failure came from the structure itself. The methane or oxygen tank walls lost integrity under load. Once that happened, the booster was effectively done. You can't fix a primary tank failure like that without rebuilding most of the vehicle. So SpaceX didn't try to save it, they scrapped Booster 18 entirely and moved on. That decision tells you a lot about where the program is today. Losing a super heavy booster like that would have completely stalled Starship flights in the past. This time, it barely slowed things down. Booster 19 was already far along in production, and SpaceX simply shifted focus, finished it, and stacked it for Flight 12 within weeks. This booster is expected to fly with its 33 Raptor engines on the first stage, most of them being the newer Raptor 3 design. And this isn't just a small upgrade. Raptor 3 is way more powerful than what SpaceX was flying before. A Raptor 2 engine produces around 230 tons of thrust, while Raptor 3 is estimated to push that closer to 280 tons of thrust. That's roughly a 20% increase in power per engine. When you scale that across 33 engines, you're talking about millions of extra tons of thrust at liftoff. That extra power gives SpaceX more margin during ascent, especially in the first few seconds after launch when the rocket is heaviest and most stressed. Raptor 3 is also physically different. SpaceX removed a lot of the exposed plumbing that caused issues on earlier Raptors. On Raptor 2, you could clearly see pipes and lines running along the engine, which made them vulnerable to heat, vibration, and debris. Raptor 3 has much of that plumbing integrated inside the engine structure. Fewer exposed parts means fewer things that can crack, leak, or shake loose during a 33-engine ignition. Another big change is chamber pressure. Raptor 2 already ran at extremely high pressure, around 300 bar, which made it the highest pressure rocket engine ever flown. On top of Booster 19 will sit Ship 39, the Starship upper stage assigned to Flight 12. Ship 39 is also version 3 hardware. And this is where the goals of the mission really become clear. Earlier Starship ships were mostly about proving re-entry, heat shield performance, and basic control during descent. Ship 39 is built with orbital class operations in mind. By the time SpaceX stacked the booster, most of the major assembly work on Ship 39 was already complete. Booster 19 has already completed initial structural checks and non-cryogenic pressurization tests. The next major milestone will be cryogenic proof testing. 
This involves filling the booster and ship tanks with supercooled liquid oxygen and liquid methane to simulate the stresses they'll experience on launch day. These tests are not optional. If a vehicle can't pass cryo testing cleanly, it doesn't fly. After cryo tests come static fires. For the booster, that means igniting all or most of the Raptor engines while the vehicle is clamped to the pad. This is one of the most difficult tests SpaceX performs. You're talking about tens of millions of newtons of thrust being generated without the rocket going anywhere. Typically, SpaceX schedules cryo testing first, then static fires a few days to a couple of weeks later. Considering all of these, early January launch would be extremely aggressive, but late January or February is very realistic if testing proceeds smoothly. Of course, Musk doesn't want to stop here. Even before the new Starship version 3 has flown a single full mission, he's already talking about what comes next, and that's Starship version 4. Right now, a fully stacked Starship version 3 stands at a little over 120 meters tall. Musk has said version 4 will be 10 to 20 percent longer, which would push the total height to around 140 meters. Most of that extra length won't go into the booster. It goes into the ship itself, the part that actually travels through space. Why does length matter? Because inside Starship, length equals tank volume. Version 3 can already hold roughly 1,600 tons of liquid methane and oxygen. Version 4 is expected to push that closer to 2,300 tons. That's not a small upgrade. That's nearly 50% more propellant inside the ship. The reason SpaceX cares so much about this is Mars. Getting to Mars doesn't just depend on engines or guidance systems. It depends on how much energy you can leave Earth orbit with. With version 3, Starship can reach Mars, but the trip would take around half a year or more. That's a long time for humans to sit inside a spacecraft, exposed to radiation, and relying on limited life support systems. With version 4, the extra fuel allows Starship to leave Earth orbit much faster. Higher departure speed means a shorter cruise. Instead of 6 to 8 months, the trip could drop to 3 to 5 months depending on launch windows. Cutting even a few months off the journey massively reduces radiation exposure and supply needs. More fuel also means more engines are needed to use it effectively. Version 4's ship is expected to use nine Raptor 3 engines, up from six on earlier versions. Raptor 3 itself is more powerful, producing close to 280 tons of thrust per engine, compared to about 230 tons from Raptor 2. That added thrust is what allows the ship to perform stronger burns in space without stretching engine burn times too long. But adding fuel and engines increases mass, and that affects liftoff. To compensate, SpaceX is also scaling up the Super Heavy booster. Version 4 of Super Heavy is expected to carry around 4,500 tons of propellant, giving it enough energy to lift a heavier ship without struggling off the pad. With over 30 Raptor engines, total liftoff thrust could approach 10,000 tons, making it the most powerful rocket ever built by a wide margin. With version 4, the extra fuel allows Starship to leave Earth orbit much faster. Higher departure speed means a shorter cruise. Instead of 6 to 8 months, the trip could drop to 3 to 5 months, depending on launch windows. Cutting even a few months off the journey massively reduces radiation exposure and supply needs. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.